Hey everyone, I've played some dark games in my past. I don't want to talk about shit like Dark Souls, Dire Fear of Humans, or Mortal Kombat, <laughs> or Resident Evil. Oh, what the fuck? We're not talking about the horror or scary, no, we're talking about actual dark shit. For example, Majora's Mask. But the impending doom sends a whole tongue in this depressive form of melancholy. Absolutely amazing surreal game. Games like Fragile Dreams, where you're the last person on earth struggling to find any type of human compassion, seeing if there's anybody else left. Incredible, one of my favorite games of all time. I had a dream that a familiar voice was calling me. As I walked along, it spoke to me. Sometimes worried, sometimes happy. We watched the red sky, full of clouds, caught up in the summer wind. The little time we spent together shone brilliantly, like a light in those darkened days of the past. I know that no matter how badly I wish to see you again, that can never be. Those who live must continue to live. Those who are dead will only continue to stay dead in the cold, hard earth. Eternal darkness where you just slowly sink down into actual insanity. You are not free to leave this plane until you complete a task for me. You are to hunt and kill the master of this house. Do this one thing and you will be free. Else fear the wrath of Zelotov. Everything is complete for your arrival, Master. Now we must wait for the planets to align, and that is not too many years from now. Another Roivus has crossed our path. This time, we will not be so merciful. Mercy has no place in this world. It is only a place for me. He will meet such a horrible death that the rest of the line will never set foot in his house again. Pray to me that they don't. Pray to me anyway. And then we have games like Project Zero, where certain stories are just... just drenched in such dramatic, intense emotions. I can see things that no one else can. Ever since my family died. Images of death that only I could see. I could feel them surrounding me. And since then, death has been by my side. Excuse me? Hello? You're looking for someone? She might have gone to the mountain. Mount Hikami. It's an infamous suicide spot, isn't it? But today, I want to talk about the darkest game I ever played. Only 
Naki recently dropped a demo for the Switch. And I'm just gonna talk about the first five minutes or so of the demo so there won't be too many actual spoilers of the game I'm not gonna talk about until the title drops basically so you start this game off it's an RPG an action RPG it plays so smoothly and the combat is super addictive I love the style there's a lot of um, glowing elements when you go into the dark world and everything so the premise of the story is this your person and in this world, you're not allowed to grieve for those people that pass away. Like when your loved ones pass away, if you grieve for them, their souls will get lost. The protagonist of the story, it's his job to find those lost souls and to guide them into the afterlife. So uh... Now, just the fact that you are not allowed to grieve for the dead is already pretty dark. But they use this instantly in the first few minutes of the game. You're supposed to find a little boy. You find this boy. The boy is lost, he's all sad, he's alone, he doesn't know why he's alone, he wants to see his parents. You break the rule, you bend the rules a little bit, so you go from the dark world into the living world. The boy is allowed, is able to see what happens in the real world because he's with your main character. The mom comes out and the main character, he's like a dick, he's a fucking, he's a cold hearted bastard. And basically the boy is scared and he's alone. The main protagonist instantly says to the mom, he's scared, he's alone, it's your fault. And then the dad doesn't understand it and the mom is like, she's right, I'm grieving, I'm sad, the kid is alone. So because she is grieving over the fact that she thinks the kid is alone, he's actually feeling alone, which kind of fuels the fact that yes, if you grieve for them, they get lost. And then the main character convinces the mom, you know, if you want to see your kid again because you're that sad, I can kill you right here on the spot, you can be with your kid again. And then the dad is like, well wait, but if my mom and my wife goes, then I want to go too. So they kneel down and the main character kills them both in front of the kid so they can all be together. But the main character even says, I don't know if you're actually going to be together, but we can try this. He convinces them that he can kill them, like they can commit suicide so they might be together. It is mind boggling. I love this concept of the soul and the way this game uses it. When, you kill, when the main character kills these two people, then the title screen drops and the game just begins. わかった。はい。いや。はい。それでも。任せろ。はい。待っててね。いいな。うん。俺がやる。よし。
悲しんではいけない悲しみは死者をためらわせるためらえば迷い迷えば生まれ変わることができない One minute after that, you have a mass suicide in the village. Over 30 people killed themselves. And that sets the story in motion. It is absolutely insane. I can't begin to describe. I saw the studio screen drop after the main character convinced the parents he could kill them. So again, maybe we were with the kid. And I was looking at the title screen like, holy shit. The game didn't even start yet. The title screen didn't drop yet. It is so fucking dark and I absolutely love it. I can't wait till the game drops, the full game drops, to explore this world and what they're going to do with the story. Because they had so many ideas already, obviously, that they used in the start of the game. Where I feel this is going to evolve into this massive growth of your character. And this idea of what you can do with the soul and and the concept of the current world and the dead world. Because the, the main gameplay element, apart from the combat, is that you can switch on the fly. You're in the living world, and then you pass on to the dead world. This awesome effect comes on the screen, the whole level changes, everything comes dark and a bit purpley. You have like glowing shit everywhere. Iktomori wa shisha to seija no aida o torimotsu. Iwaba, chouteisha no yakuari o ninatte iru. Kono yo to あの世を行き来し迷いと救済するのが幾くともりの仕事だ。So that I can look for the lost souls and it looks amazing. You can do it on the fly, always non-stop. And you already have a great combat system where you can certain souls they don't get lost but they don't get fine. They kind of fall in between and you can use those souls to create a bond with and you can fight with those souls. They have weapons and abilities. You can unlock moves for them, you can link with them, you can choose between different souls. They have different weapons and attacks. So the whole combat, it's not just that the story is so absolutely dark. The game just feels so amazing. <laughs> When it comes to the combat system, the way it looks, I just I can't wait to dive into this world and see what else Oninaki has to offer. This was just a really short video, I just wanted to mention that I, I fucking love this game so fast already with how dark it is and just needed to like talk about it a little bit. Thank you guys for watching. Check out the demo of Oninaki on the Switch, you can download it for free on the eShop to try it out. Try this game out, I swear you won't be disappointed. It is just oh, beautiful, fucking love it. It's about time that more developers really try these like dark approaches that seem taboo on some levels when it comes to addressing shit like the soul and suicide and all that shit. And there's the main character just being so fucking cold hearted. It's just absolutely beautiful. Please try it out. Stay real.